it's freezing cold out here to play instruments, so this is our last one. Thank you all for hanging. We'll be back. We'll be back this week. So please come see us this week. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Reporter James come the guy on the bike, and we're gonna try to slip in here to Hauser and Worth and get some pictures of an exhibition by George Condo, Internal Riot. Special shout out to our friends in Carlingen, Germany, Ireland, Greece, and Newcastle. Stay tuned. George Condo, internal riot. Wow. So I just walked up five flights of stairs because I was uh, <clears throat> paranoid to get in the elevator. And uh, I guess this is, she was on two floors. We'll start here. It's titled Father and Daughter with Face Mask 2020. Acrylic pigment stick, metallic paint, and wax crayon on linen. Well, we covered a uh, George Condo show about uh, maybe a year and a half ago up at Skarstadt Gallery on 66, 68th Street, somewhere on the Upper East Side. And, uh, well, we got a lot of responses. Uh, generally, someone of George's reputation, seems like it usually takes them two or three years before they have another major show. And, uh, well, George is a very <clears throat> prolific artist. And the other thing is that, uh, I guess it was about six months ago that uh, I got the news that George had changed dealers and was now being represented by Hauser and Worth. So, I guess they would like to uh, cement the relationship with a nice show. Okay, I believe this is Hysteria. 2020 acrylic pigment stick and metallic paint on linen. This is 82 by 80 inches. Well, the New York art world is a very interesting, uh, dynamic uh, institution. And uh, there's been a lot of shifts lately. So, well, Mary Boone got busted and, <laughs> for tax evasion and went up the river. So she was out of the scene and uh, a lot of her artists were kind of out on the street. Uh, Chime and Reed has 
kind of, well, they're still in business, but they've kind of closed their Chelsea establishment and uh, doing mostly private dealing from the little space on the Upper East Side. I believe this one is titled Internal Riot 2020 Acrylic Pigment and Metallic Paint on Linen. 82 by 80. It looks like these are all about that same size. So that's about uh, seven foot square or something like that. Anyway, uh, so watching all these machinations among the galleries and their artists is kind of like watching musical chairs here. It's titled End of Reason. They're also mentioning in the press release that uh, these are paintings that uh, George has made during the, the lockdown. Okay, I kind of like some of this stuff where he gets a little grimier. Also, well, maybe I'll post a link to the show that we saw about a year and a half ago, and you can um, maybe compare some of the various series of works that he was doing. So, let's say these all kind of fit into a um, series of cubistic faces. Shades of Darkness. Well, as I was saying, I've, I've been watching George's work for quite a while. I think I bumped into him the first time in 1981-82 at the Red Bar. And, uh, well, George has had a stellar career. Oh, so we've got a little munching of the paper here. Got some paint on a wrinkled piece of paper and you kind of munch it against it. You get an interesting texture you can work with. Uh, This is human rage. It's kind of uh, noteworthy that, uh, well, this particular series of work is all kind of cubistic. Uh, maybe you would more properly call it uh, cartoon cubism. And yeah, although these paintings I would consider big, they're about seven feet by or seven and a half by seven, something like that. Uh, they're actually not as big as the, some of the paintings that uh, George had uptown last year. This is called Up Against Us, Up Against the Wall. And George is a very uh, good colorist when he wants to be. Also, uh, generally, a lot of George's work that I've seen was uh, oil and uh, well he 
he's, he's facile with whatever medium he's using. And I assume these, most of these black lines are uh, black oil stick, although he's kind of uh, mushing in some black paint strokes. Okay, I'm gonna try to be moving slow enough. I get a lot of complaints from people that say they get seasick watching the videos if I'm moving too fast. The only problem with that is that uh, it's about 15 minutes to closing and I have a choice. I can either try to get in all the paintings or I can look at one painting until closing time. This is titled Machine Bugs. Well, I was saying that it's kind of unusual that <clears throat> George is doing cubism. Actually, it seems like that's kind of a current trend. I know that uh, some of Dana Schutz's recent work is kind of cubistic. Okay, so we kind of got the Bugs Bunny face in there and the, the buck teeth, goofy eyes. Uh, anyway, getting back to the idea of cubism, I was uh, doing a series of paintings probably back in the mid 80s. I'd fallen in love with Stuart Davis and uh, of a whole group that they were calling the, uh, oh, was it the Madison Avenue Cubits? Something like that. And uh, well, I'd also been doing a lot of reading and thinking about the way that the, the Europeans were doing the trans avant-garde, which meant that they were looking at a lot of work, previous work by, well, the Germans were looking at the Brook artists, uh, the Italians were looking at some of the uh, metaphysical painters and the surrealists. So I was kind of thinking, why, gee, why can't somebody that's painting in New York do something like that? Anyway, so I did a whole series that I worked on for probably years dealing with cubism and that whole idea. Well, I was at an after party for a chic opening and the mid 80s, this is about the time that the East Village was really booming and neo-expressionism was taking off and uh, I happened to meet a fairly popular and successful Italian artist at the time and we were talking and uh, he was saying, oh yeah, neo-expressionism is great, it's so wonderful and I said to him that, uh, well I'm doing neo-cubism <laughs> and he looked at me and goes, really? That sounds great! So how many other people are doing that? at the time and I said no one just me <laughs> and he uh, yeah he grimaced uh, grabbed his drink and walked away he realized that I was some kind of a loser nerd <laughs> okay this is called the, the new normal Yeah, George is a funny guy. There's no business like no business. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it looks like George is, uh, Maybe taking a wad of paper and mushing it into the paint and then throwing it on the canvas maybe and flailing and flicking 
little dollops of paint on there. I have to keep slowing myself down here. And I was going to say all of George's lines, mainly in this show, are all black, which I guess goes to one of George's strengths. Is he's a he's a pretty darn good draftsman. Okay, we're going to wrap up the paintings looking at this one. This is a portrait of Travis. So that was a look at the paintings here. We're gonna run downstairs. Yes. <clears throat> well, down the stairs. Take a look at the drawings. Okay, well, it's almost closing time. We don't want to keep this young lady sitting here in the gallery too late. So we're just going to run through most of this. This is titled Portrait of Virginia Woolf. Crayon Aquarell Rosh Gold Spray Paint on Paper. And, uh, well, this pretty much carries along the same theme that we were looking at upstairs, which is the large kind of goofy cubism. We're gonna keep running fast. I can't believe this is a drawing for violin dedicated to Matthias Pinster and Leela Josephokowitz. And this looks like pen and ink, ink washes. Okay, we can almost go through here and pick out the little tidbits of various influences, a little Picasso there. We got our Don Martin goofy faces. Oh, he's got some graphite in there as well. It's 25 by 40 inches. titled Sunset. Oh. Well, okay, they're already kind of <laughs> encouraging people to get out the door here. This is appearances. And, uh, well, also, like one of the things I like about George is he's really good with the mixed media kind of stuff. So you've got some watercolor, you've got ink, you've got graphite, probably oil pastel maybe, gouache, acrylic. I might even have some uh, you know, metallic pigment in there. I think also, uh, it's kind of a nice example of him doing Images that uh, kind of expand out and are larger 
in the picture plane and then sort of shrinking down and getting some nice little tight, smaller areas where you can get in there and grind away. Sunrise on planet Earth. It's 49 by 67, so that's a big, a big work on paper, a big drawing. It's titled Internal Dialogue, Ink, Graphite, and Aquawell Wash on Paper. Well, George had a great little uh, retrospective at the new museum about, gosh, I don't know, five or six years ago. And, uh, well, they showed uh, I don't know what, 35 years worth of his work. But I think in all of that uh, production, I think some of the some of the drawings and works on paper were some of the most satisfying pieces that I saw on the show. Maybe I'll attach a link below. I remember. Well, they're calling this triptych here expanding f figures. So these are 43 by 60 inches each. So this looks like uh, maybe oil stick, charcoal, ink wash. James Com reporting on George Kondo. Internal riot. Paintings and drawings. Here at Hauser and Worth. I think we're on 22nd Street. And it's actually after closing time. So you can like this, subscribe, post it on all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We just ask you to say, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Wayne Tucker. Thank you. David Liner, Diego Joaquin Ramirez, Barry Stevenson, Miles Tucker. My name is Wayne Tucker. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful night. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.